Hello and welcome you all for today's class. Uh, we last time we were looking at uh, the uh, Shapiro reaction and uh, some allyl uh, re, uh, allylation of various kinds of aldehydes or carbonyl compounds using uh, different uh, allyl metal uh, reagents. Uh, in the Shapiro reaction what we did was to make use of the vinyl lithium uh, for example of this kind uh, and, and then we converted into vinyl uh, silane and then we, as we saw that we can convert this into the epoxide and eventually uh, convert into a carbonyl group and the carbonyl group was actually uh, started uh, in the substrate to be in this particular position and now we have moved into this position and that is what we called as 1,2 ketone transposition. So um, after that uh, we uh, looked at uh, how uh, allyl uh, silanes, allyl tantin, allyl boranes and allyl boronates of uh, this type of uh, substrates and of course we also saw how crotyl uh, substrates can be equilibrated in, in uh, depending on which metal uh, salt is used. And then towards the end we looked at these, uh, these uh, allyl boronates, how do they react with say benzaldehyde and if the geometry is, uh, is trans then we get this uh, anti product as the mean product. Uh, this reaction we discussed in detail. Of course uh, the uh, vinyl group here uh, for example if we um, move the uh, electron density in this particular fashion then of course we get this particular product here as I mentioned that the phenyl group is equatorially oriented and therefore um, that will always be in that particular position. It is only um, now remaining uh, borons uh, have to be, uh, boron has to be close to the oxygen and the geometry of the double bond is fixed and therefore now as we can see that the OH group is going down and the methyl group is going up therefore this particular part of the molecule is also fixed. Uh, the, we have used hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydro, uh, hydroxide as a, as a reagent basically because the product that will form will have a boron. So basically instead of having hydrogen here, first it will be a boron which will be then uh, needed to be uh, removed uh, by uh, oxidatively and that is what the role of the hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide is. And in a similar fashion when we took the corresponding cis product then of course uh, we have the product in which the um, syn product is formed in a, a large amount as you can see it from here. Again phenyl group is in equatorial, the geometry of the double bond is fixed and now if we look at it the methyl is pointing downward, the hydroxy group is pointing downward in the transition state and that is exactly what is being reflected here. So this is uh, what we did it and we will now look at little bit more in detail about allyl silane, allyl tin, allyl boranes etc. a bit later but first we would also like to look at uh, what is uh, uh, an allyl indium. Uh, so indium is also one of the very important um, uh, metal and has been utilized uh, in, um, in organic synthesis uh, quite well and uh, indium chemistry is useful as it is comparable uh, as it is uh, this should be A uh, comparable to other transition metal based chemistry. Uh, indium of course uh, as a utility is used in semiconductors but that is not something that we are now right now worried about it. It's, its first ionization potential as you can see is 5.8 electron volt which is um, less than that of zinc or tin or even magnesium for example. So uh, its uh, first ionization potential is actually closer to lithium or sodium therefore uh, very readily it can transfer one electron and since it is uh, of a very large size that means it shows low heterophilicity. 
in organic reactions. The heteroatoms do not easily uh, attach to the indium uh, species and therefore uh, the reactions can be uh, tolerated in water or uh, other medium. Thus uh, indium is uh, low heterophilic in nature and thus oxygen and nitrogen functional groups are usually tolerated. That means in the substrate we can have functional groups which can be of oxygen and nitrogen origin. Also we see uh, chemoselective transformations using indium based reactions. Since indium configuration is 4 d 10 5 s 2 5 p 1 it is found that it reacts with uh, Rx that is uh, halides are uh, could be allyl or any other uh, organic halides and then uh, form this kind of species R3 in 2 x 3 whose structure has been found to be of this kind and this allows carbo uh, to take place with organic substrates in one step procedure. That means now we react this with uh, say aldehydes or any other uh, ketones then what we can do is carry out the CC bond formations and such reactions can be done in solvents like THF or DMF. In fact THF or DMF solvents are generally preferred because in other solvents the reaction is found to be some sluggish. Now we don't really have to isolate this uh, organometallic species. We can simply mix indium or indium salts with the, the halides and uh, along with them the uh, aldehyde or a ketone to which the reaction has to be done and uh, we then of course uh, let the reaction complete and uh, isolate the product as is required and we don't really have to isolate the organometallic uh, species unlike in cases where uh, such organometallic species have to be uh, isolated. So this is the advantage of using indium based reaction. Like for example, indium reagents react at the gamma position as we have discussed earlier. For example, uh, this is the uh, uh, substrate that we have here. Here you have alpha, beta and gamma position here. So alpha, beta and gamma position here. So the reaction occurs in at the gamma position basically and it can react with aldehyde. Uh, in the presence of DMF uh, and it is only uh, one hour reaction is very fast and of you can also carry out such reactions in aqueous medium and the corresponding allyl alcohol is obtained, homo allyl alcohol is obtained, uh, actually it is an allylic substrate that is being used and therefore we get the homo allylic uh, 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 alcohols and as you can see the yields are fairly high. Interestingly, in such cases, uh, ester groups, cyano, hydroxy groups remain unaffected. So the reaction is fairly mild. It is actually an example of what is called as barbier uh, allylation or alkylation of carbonyl groups with alkyl halide and a metal, metal. It is usually done with zinc, but some other metals also uh, can be used in such a reaction. And the name actually derives from Philip Barbier who was actually a teacher of uh, Victor Grignard who introduced the Grignard reaction. So it is a very interesting uh, Barbier allylation which is uh, very um, much utilized in organic synthesis. And we can see that majority of the times it is the gamma position where the reaction occurs. But if you have a sterically hindered substrate then sometimes one can see alpha position being attacked. For example, if we take an allyl uh, halide of this type and react with indium uh, which will uh, in situ form this type of indium species uh, and if we react it with say this particular alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde then the reaction occurs from the gamma position to this aldehyde leading to the formation of this type of product. On the other hand, if the same indium species which is formed in situ is allowed to react with sterically hindered tri n butyl tin chloride then the alpha attack takes place to form this type of allyl tributyl tin in which of course the um, E product is the major product. 
Now, in the reaction of ketones of this kind, which is a cyclic ketone, uh, obviously uh, the attack uh, will be preferred from the equatorial side. But in this particular case, uh, there are no substituents around a ketone and therefore the reaction occurs from the gamma position only, but uh, from the equatorial side to lead to the formation of this type of a major product. Now, um, if uh, we react with crotyl uh, based substrates, then we can see that the reaction does occur. This is the alpha position and uh, this is the alpha position, this is the beta position and this is the gamma position. The reaction is obviously as expected is taking place uh, via gamma uh, orientation and uh, as we have already seen that uh, when we have a uh, uh, substrate like this as you can see here syn and anti is forming 66 into uh, and 34 ratio for example. So uh, this is uh, erythro and this is the 3 O and uh, if we uh, look at the, uh, the that means in this particular case we do not have um, that strong um, this uh, uh, ratio difference in terms of syn and anti as we had seen in the case of boron. But nevertheless the reaction does take place and of course you get larger amount of uh, the syn product here erythro and, and the 3O product in this particular fashion. And uh, uh, now if we look at the, the further reactions of this is alpha pinene. If we take alpha pinene and we carry out the functionalization at this uh, particular high carbon atom and make the corresponding bromide and react with indium. And once the indium reaction occurs, now this is the alpha position, this is the beta position and this is the gamma position. Now you see what is happening is that the, the reaction is occurring with the protonation at the gamma position. So this is the gamma position where the proton is coming. So, so basically what is happening is that when a reaction of uh, pinene which occurs uh, in such a fashion that uh, the um, say you have an indium bromide I will put it in this fashion and then you are getting it uh, a product which is this. So we start with this uh, thermodynamically more stable product which is uh, an alpha pinene and we are getting uh, a beta pinene in which the double bond is exo double bond here. It is exo whereas here it is endo double bond. So this is more stable whereas this is less stable and therefore the yield is not very high the 24 percent only is there. But nevertheless this is a very useful conversion of the alpha pinene to the beta pinene. Now I suggest that uh, you people can uh, take up uh, and see how this uh, erythro and the 3 O products are formed, what is the transition state. Uh, that we discuss it uh, in the in the boron case you can try and work it out and see how it is and we can discuss about it in more detail uh, when we have the question answer sessions. Now the addition of allyl indium reagents to aldehydes uh, which have substituents at alpha or beta carbon atom for example if you have a if you have a substituent which is uh, something like this here uh, then uh, a very diastereoselective reaction is possible in aqueous medium. For example, with an alpha oxy aldehyde, this is what we are talking about here. The major product is the syn diastereomer. So actually it is a chelation control, anti is no chelation actually. So what is happening is that if you look at intermediate here, as you can see, this is the aldehyde portion here, the aldehyde portion is here, then you have uh, the um, uh, aldehyde carbon is attached to the next carbon atom and then the OH is here. So this, this part is basically an OH part and this part is of course the uh, R group which is present here. Now if we orient, uh, if we orient the uh, allyl indium in such a fashion that if the carbonyl group is oriented here then you have this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this is 6 member transition state here. A six member transition state in which now alcohol is also having a chelation with the indium. 
So therefore, this geometry is restricted here and uh, this, is, this is the transition state in which both the oxygens are attaching to the indium and therefore the, the transition state is, is restricted. Now once the, the uh, indium gets transferred to this, then of course as you can see that you, you, you can put it in this version that you have, this is how the, the carbon carbon bond will form allyl group comes in here and of course the orientation of the this uh, particular diol remains in this fashion. Now if we put it in, in, a, in a Newman projection formula it would look like this as uh, uh, we can uh, imagine that this particular carbon atom being at the, at the back of it and if we, if we turn it around then the hydroxy group comes below, hydrogen comes below and the allyl group goes on the top. And of course if we, if we turn this particular portion towards uh, us uh, or the hydroxy group going behind or, or in such a fashion that your know, R group comes on the top and the hydrogen goes on the top then the hydroxy comes in the, the plane of the blackboard the way it is shown here. Of course you can see now that in, in both the cases we can also rotate it and bring it to this new projection being equivalent to this particular position here. And uh, if we see that this R group and this allyl group are actually uh, in a form in a zigzag fashion in this particular way it is shown then the two hydroxy groups would be pointing in the same direction that is the reason why they are called as syn, uh, syn products basically. So uh, the, there is a chelation control and therefore since as, as you can directly see from here for example these two are pointing downward and when uh, you turn it around then R and allyl group will be uh, opposite to each other. So this is how the syn uh, product is formed and that is not the case if uh, there is no chelation control. Now it is also seen that uh, if we start with an allyl indium species like this and react with benzoquinone then even at uh, minus 45 degrees in DMF the uh, corresponding homo allyl alcohol is easily formed and uh, it is found that if one refluxes uh, uh, this species in the presence of silver oxide then uh, the corresponding substituted uh, benzoquinone is formed. The way reaction takes place is uh, this homo allyl alcohol which can be written like this here. Uh, it undergoes 3-3 uh, three, three sigma tropic rearrangement of this kind where the allyl group now has attached uh, itself on this particular position and then under the oxidation conditions with silver oxide it gets oxidized to form this uh, substituted benzoquinone. In a similar fashion uh, for example we can also carry out the allylation of an imine uh, which leads to the formation of this uh, homo allylamine. Now like zinc and uh, tin based reactions indium based reactions can also be used in aqueous medium and it is also found that there is no Wurz type of coupling that uh, occurs in these uh, reactions like for example this uh, Rx cannot undergo a coupling to form RR. So this is how uh, interesting reactions uh, uh, take place uh, with indium. However it is the only disadvantage is uh, to some extent is that it is a somewhat expensive uh, reagent. Now if we take uh, say for example alpha halo esters uh, for example, if we take uh, uh, this uh, alpha haloesters or allyl chlorides are commonly used in, in many of these reactions. Uh, say for example, we take this uh, allyl chloride and we put an indium to it. So obviously this is an alpha position, this is a beta position and this is the gamma position. The reaction takes place through the gamma carbon atom. And therefore, we can get uh, an orientation of the uh, hydroxy and the chloride, uh, chlorine as this. And once we um, react such a uh, vicinal chlorohydrine with sodium hydride which is a base, then of course you can deprotonate this and we can have uh, O minus here 
which can then react with uh, intramolecularly and the chloride can go and one can form the corresponding vinyl epoxide. So, this is a vinyl epoxide. And as I mentioned earlier, you have alpha haloketones, alpha haloesters, for example, this kind, if we do this in alpha, beta and gamma, although it, in this case it does not really matter because it is unsubstituted. However, we get this and of course, in a similar fashion we have a base, then we can get the corresponding this uh, epoxide here. So, this was vinyl epoxide or this is of course, is allyl epoxide. And uh, in a similar fashion, if we do uh, intramolecular reactions like this, then of course, you have alpha, beta and gamma. From the gamma carbon, the reaction takes place in this fashion and you get uh, this um, particular uh, hydroxy ester moiety and uh, uh, the, um, the re reaction of the hydroxy group with the ester group in intramolecularly leaves the formation of the corresponding alpha methylene gamma butyrolactone. So, this is a, a very interesting way of uh, in situ generating and as you can see the reaction can be carried out in the water medium. Of course, in this case the, the stereochemistry of the product would uh, again depend on the kind of uh, transition state that we are going to look at because the transition state would be again 6 member transition state because indium will be here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, again I suggest that uh, please work it out the transition state and see how does the, the geometry of the, uh, the two groups here uh, which are at the junction are, are uh, uh, beta oriented or in the same direction. Now, uh, we can also carry out uh, very interesting reactions. Say for example, you take this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, keto ester and if we uh, uh, take the proton from here off by base like sodium hydride, then we can generate an anion. Then anion goes and it reacts at the allylic position here for example and the CC bond is formed and we can generate this particular uh, allyl bromide. Now, if we uh, react this with uh, uh, indium, so you have beta, alpha, beta and gamma. So, the, from the gamma position the reaction occurs and then you form this intermediate which is what is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 member intermediate and the negative charge and breaks up in this fashion and this carbon carbon bond breaks because the negative charge that is going to be formed here would be stabilized here. So, basically this is the carbonyl group, this is the next carbon atom, this is the next carbon atom, this here, here, this is here and, and then your negative charge is stabilized by the ester group and that is where you get the proton off. So, this is the product that is going to form. So, it is a very neat way of uh, converting uh, keto esters into a ring expanded um, uh, compounds. Uh, likewise, we can start with um, this uh, uh, beta keto ester and uh, we uh, can do the alkylation here in a similar fashion as uh, with this uh, dihalyl chloride and we can generate anion here an attack on one of them and then we can remove and we can get this and this then reacts at the alpha, beta and gamma position. So, this goes on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this attacks on the this carbon atom and this is what is formed. On the other hand, if we take directly like this, then of course, you have alpha, beta and gamma that directly goes and attacks onto this and this is the position where the allylation has taken place. So, one can carry out such kind of uh, allylations using indium and again as you can see in the water medium it can be carried out. So, the message here is that you have a carbonyl group or you have uh, uh, a carbonyl group in which there is an ester group uh, or anything of that kind then allylation can allow 
the CC bond formation to take place and then the CC bond formed product can be uh, accordingly uh, depending on the structure can be manipulated and get further products. So uh, we would uh, look at little bit more um, detail in the next time and till then you can go through these uh, allelations which I have discussed today with indium and also with tin and then we will take up in the next class more in detail about uh, these reactions and of course some exceptions and some more uh, synthetic transformations that we will carry out. Till then uh, take care, bye, thank you and see you next time.